Welcome back to Dweebcast. We are back for more Science of Sci-Fi, a segment we're doing in partnership with the website Science 2.0. So the Back to the Future trilogy has given us all kinds of sweet futuristic tech that we're still waiting to see become reality. But there's one thing that I'm most disappointed to not have under my feet yet. It's the hoverboard. Here to help explain why science has failed in its quest to create one of the coolest movie props ever is award-winning science fiction author and full-blown astrophysicist Dr. David Brin. Doctor, or should I say, Doc, thanks for joining us. It's great to be with you guys. Thank you so much. So uh, in Back to the Future Part 2, we see Marty McFly evade Biff Tannen's grandson Griff using a hoverboard. Ever since then, everybody totally wanted one. Obviously, hoverboard tech is still fictional. Is there a simple answer as to why something like this doesn't exist yet? Physics makes it really hard to have a hoverboard. Not impossible. But it's kind of like a self-driving car. You're going to have to have it under very special circumstances. And the alternative is that you overcome that gravity, which is actually a fairly weak force, with stronger forces like electromagnetism. So the, the general idea is sort of like a maglev, where there's two opposing uh, magnetic forces that are repelling one another so that the effect of hovering occurs over this this object. The magnetic field supporting the toy is unstable. This is the problem we're having with fusion power is that whatever you're holding up with magnetic field, it's going to try to squirt in some other direction. What would it take to sort of control that? You could get a hoverboard in a recreational park the park itself would be intelligently noticing where your board is so that it would be shifting the magnetic fields so they're constantly slipping in the direction that you want to go. But the hoverboard will not be able to do that itself on regular pavement or regular ground because there's nothing for the fields to leverage against. But in the way we see it in the movies, uh, they are autonomously driving or hovering around town what about science and physics makes that impossible? Is it a power to weight ratio? You cannot contain in a board enough power to support the mass to weight, even with magnetic fields. We don't know how to do it with gravitational fields. It's probably going to take our descendants three, four generations to do with gravity. Would it end up being cheaper, maybe more energy efficient, or is there no way that that could best a wheel making contact with the ground. There are ways to, to get beyond what our ancestors considered the miracle of the wheel and that we take for granted. These things can and will happen if we decide that we have a scientific, ambitious, nobody's going to stop us, but we'll work out the tweaks and we'll negotiate about the environment and all that. Right. If we have that kind of a culture instead of the kind of culture that tears itself apart with many people on the left and the right, being anti-future and anti-nostalgic. We'll see how that goes, I guess. If uh, we want to know more futuristic predictions, uh, like in all of your works, we can go to davidbrin.com. davidbrin.com, and you'll find a, a three-minute video trailer for my latest book, Existence. That's the most fun you'll have in three minutes with your clothes on. Thanks so much to Dr. David Brin. Follow him on Twitter at David Brin. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Dweebcast. I'm Andy Reesmeyer. See you in the future or perhaps the past.